Hey guys, welcome to this video. Here we're gonna be setting up our recurring billing in Xero, and I'll show you how we pull that through into XPM. Now before we do that, I just wanna to touch on what situation uh, you'll want to set this up. So with your uh, engagements that you have with your clients that do their financial statements and tax return, you'll have it with, uh, at the moment, your current relationships, you either have it on a time and cost basis, or you'll have a recurring billing basis. So under the time and cost, you do the timesheets, then you send the invoice. If that's the situation, you're not gonna set this up for th those particular clients. You're gonna be doing uh, your timesheets in XPM and invoicing uh, once the job is done. You may have some clients at the moment that you're billing on a recurring monthly basis, and we wanna take those recurring bills and put them against the correct jobs in XPM. That is the situation that we'll be setting up this recurring billing for. Now, in your practice right now, you may have no clients on this recurring billing, and then we'll be looking at migrating some clients over to these fixed fee plans. Uh, so this is the method you'll be going through to set those up. So if you don't have those at the moment, uh, still very important to watch this uh, tutorial here so you can see how we set it up once we do migrate those clients over to fixed billing plans. Right, so let's jump in and we'll check it out together. Okay, so here we are in Zero, and to set up the repeating invoice, we go to Accounts and then down to Sales. And then we go to New and choose Repeating Invoice. Then you land on this page here. Now, uh, so the thing I should have mentioned earlier is uh, how the contacts work between XPM and Zero. So what we want to do is make sure that we've got a consistent database between the two platforms. So uh, we're about to set up a repeating invoice for AC Corporation. Now AC Corporation is sitting in XPM and it should also be sitting in Zero as well. So there's a number of ways we can do this. Either we can uh, export all of our contacts from XPM and then put them in the Zero template and import them in there or we can pull them from zero up into XPM. So either way, when we get to this stage, we should have a consistent database between the two platforms. So when we go to type in a, a customer's name, it should know who it's talking to in both platforms. Now, the unique identifier between the two uh, platforms is going to be the customer name. So the name in zero needs to equal the name in XPM, and that's the field it uses to map the two together. So the rest of the contact details can be different, but it is those, those names that is what identifies them between each other. So really, really important that you get that correct. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is we'll jump back in and I'll show you how to uh, set up this repeating invoice for AC Corporation. Right, so we're gonna repeat this transaction every month, and the invoice date, I'm just gonna pull this back. So let's say we wanna send the invoice on the 13th, of each month because the 13th of the month is seven days before the 20th and we're going to pull that money on the 20th so we give them a seven day invoice so we say 13th of may and it's due seven days of the current month and you want to be setting your first invoice date uh, the um, the date that you're going to start this recurring billing for your uh, for your clients so let's say that we're going live uh, so we're going live on the start of May, well then we, on the 20th of May we want to have that first invoice due. So now we're going to put in the customer which is AC Corporation, just like that. Now the reference, this is important, so the reference needs to be the job number that we want to store this invoice against. So if we jump back into XPM here, we're in AC Corporation right now and we see we've got two jobs. So there's two jobs here. The first one is uh, the 2017 annual accounts. Those are the annual accounts that we're going to be working on this financial year. So we need to be doing the work for them. This other one here is um, job 32. That's the one we're going to start storing our recurring billing against. So what I'll do here is I want to set it up for job 32 because 31, we've already done all the billing for it. That one's all sorted. It's job 32. We want to set up here. So job 32, I'm going to start capturing our recurring billing in for so approve for sending. So it just says what message do we want to send and you can go and uh, customize this and then hit save. So uh, yeah, really want to customize that message saying, hey, no action required, we're going to direct debit these funds or however you're going to be pulling that money. Then we set up um, uh, whatever we're going to be saying on that invoice. So it's going to be a monthly service agreement like that, but we want to spell it correctly. Too many E's, there we go. Uh, quantity one, unit price is 500, so we're charging 500 per month and whether you've got GST or not, so I'm gonna say no GST on this one. And then from there, uh, we can hit save. And what this will do, because we're in June right now, and we're in June 2018, it's going to create that May invoice for me. And if we, um, if we set it as April, it'll create the April and the May invoices. 
So have a think about when we're gonna start the billing for this client. Remember, all of those invoices are gonna then send back up into XPM. So at the moment when I do this, we're gonna have one invoice in May. Um, that's gonna be created in zero, which we need to match to a payment, and it's also gonna to send to XPM when I hit save. So let's go check out the invoice in, oh, I've done something wrong. Uh, the due date cannot precede the invoice date. What have I done wrong there? Invoice date, May 18, due, uh, whoops, days after the invoice date. Sorry, well, I could have said 20 of the following month, but I've, here we go. You see what I've done there. So it should be seven days after the invoice date. I just got that one wrong. Perfect, okay, so now we've got AC Corporation set up with the uh, reference. Now if I go to my awaiting payment invoices, you'll see that we'll have an invoice in here for AC Corporation, there it is, 18 days overdue, because it was due on the 20th of May. So if I click into it, it'll be everything that we've just set up in that repeating uh, invoice there. So you can see repeats every month, and that's, it'll give you a bit of a banner across the top if it's come from a repeating invoice. Now, if I jump back into XPM, what you'll notice is that invoice hasn't actually turned up just yet. And that's because uh, everything in XPM and Zero is instant, except uh, invoices flowing from Zero back up into XPM. That's gonna happen overnight. So what I'll do is I'm gonna make a little video after I've done this tomorrow. So I'm gonna jump in tomorrow and, and show you what it looks like once that pulls through there. So that is how we set up our repeating invoicing in Zero. So what we wanna be doing is three things to keep in mind here. The first thing is make sure that our databases for our clients are consistent. So the field that is used is the name field. So our client name in XPM needs to match the client name in Zero. So as long as those two match, we're gonna have no issues. The other thing is when we're setting up that repeating invoicing, make sure that the, the reference number in that invoice maps through to the correct job number in XPM. So that way when we send that invoice information up to XPM, it's going to know which job to store that against. And I'll show you that, I'll, I'll cut this video and then show you at the end what it looks like once it pulls through. The third thing to keep in mind, which is really, really important, is the timing of when we set up our first invoice. So think about when we're gonna start invoicing on a monthly basis for our clients, that's when we wanna start our repeating invoices. So it may be this month, it may be next month, or it might be a two or three months previous. Make sure when we start doing that invoicing, that is when we set up that, uh, that repeating invoice, that first one, and then those amounts will pull through into the job uh, back up in XPM. So have a think about that timing. It may take a little bit of brainstorming and figuring out how it's all gonna look, uh, but really make sure that you get that right before you rush out and um, undertake this task. So uh, yeah, hope that all makes sense. Uh, any questions, uh, hit up the support desk. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll finish this video here and I'll quickly jump in and show you tomorrow once that invoice pulls through into uh, XPM. Hey guys, as it turns out, I forgot to make that video the next day. So here we are four months later and I can uh, log in and show you how these invoices have pulled through into our XPM. So let's jump in and we'll check it out. Right, so if we go to the financial tab in the job, you will see what's happened is we've got these invoices come through. So how they how Zero pushes them through, it looks like this invoice, gives it an invoice number and then the date, and then it comes through as a negative estimated billing. So let's jump into one of the invoices and check it out. So it basically just goes invoice imported from zero, $500. Now, uh, just jump back into the job again, go to financial. So how it works is these are all coming through as uh, negative, um, so they're sort of like negative cost items, I suppose, to recognize the payment. These are called interim. So if you run a WIP report, it's known as an interim. So as we do time, we're gonna accumulate time um, above these amounts here. So let's go do that, actually. So think of it as like a bit of a WIP ledger. So if I go and put some time to uh, annual accounts, let's bash uh, four hours in here, hit save, go back to financial. You'll see that I've got uh, annual accounts, four hours at 200, so I've got $800 of uh, billable time. Uh, and then I've got my two $500 amounts coming through, which is $100. So at the moment we're sitting at, with $200 of negative WIP. So that's how the jobs work within XPM, is you have, uh, all, all the recurring billing jobs in XPM, you have your uh, invoices coming through on a monthly basis and you have your timesheets going through. So you're running a bit of a, a, a WIP ledger with how much the, you've got your billings and also your time coming through. Now, uh, once we're ready to close this job out and it's all finished, we need to recognize that profit or loss on the job rather than having WIP sitting there. So how we do that is we go remove from invoice list, hit yes. At that stage, we've got no uh, WIP sitting on the job. We've recognized that profit. So if I go run a 
print, if I print a financial summary now, you can see here that we've uh, invoiced a thousand, our billable was 800, so we can recognize a $200 write up on this job. Whereas before we do that whip write off, what's going to happen is we're going to have a $200 negative uh, whip balance. So we need to the end of the financial year and you want to close all these jobs out, important to go through and remove from invoice list for each of them. Otherwise, all of that whip is going to flow through into your following uh, financial year. So that's how it works. Hope that was fun and I'll see you in the next video.